God that they worship does not save them. They will not bow down and worship this idol. They will not worship anyone but God. And so the king is absolutely infuriated. Nebuchadnezzar has them fire up a furnace that is on location, probably it was conveniently already there for the construction of this giant colossal statue, has them fire it up seven times hotter than it usually is, and has some of his army men take Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and drag them over to throw them into the top of this furnace. And they're bound up, so they're tied up, the Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and as they're thrown in to this fire, the furnace heat is so overwhelming that the soldiers are overcome and they die. And they are thrown in to the furnace. Now, an interesting thing happens. You may remember from growing up and hearing this story, or maybe you've heard about it somewhere else. The king is shocked because he looks in through the side window or door of this furnace and he sees four people walking around in there. Well, first of all, they're walking around. That's pretty strange. They should be vaporized, dead, burned up. And then, how many were thrown in? Shout out to me. Three. And how many does he see walking around? Four. Says in verse 25 of chapter 3. He answered and said, but I see four men un." Bound, walking in the midst of the fire, and they are not hurt. And the appearance of the fourth is like the Son of the Gods. Now, the first thing that I want to really bring up here is to trust the Lord who walks with you through the fire. Trust the Lord who walks with you through the fire. No matter what fire you are thrown into, the Lord will walk with you. Now, sometimes we Christians get burned. Sometimes we're hurt very deeply. Probably the Christians I have known that were hurt the most are two mothers of small children that I knew on separate occasions, good friends with them both to this day, who both lost their small children. One to an unexpected illness and one to a tragic accident. They were both Christians. They both had strong faith. But the fire of that grief almost consumed them. And everything they believed was thrown up in the air. They didn't even know, those two mothers, that they even wanted to keep on living. And yet, they continued to call on the God who walks with them through the fire. And as the years went by, and as they continued to lean on Him, and as they continued to trust in Him, and as they continued to pray to Him and count on Him, they found that He was with them in that grief. And in time, they developed what I call a fireproof faith. By fireproof faith, I don't mean that no fire is ever going to happen to them, but they discovered that their faith could not be burned up by the flames of anything this world throws at us. Trust in the Lord who walks with you through the fire. Nebuchadnezzar looked in the flames and saw four men walking around unbound because the Lord was with them. And they were unbound. Realize that you were unbound. You are not tied up when you're in a trial to where you can't serve the Lord anymore until you get out on the other side. You're unbound in that fight. For instance, March 13th, when we canceled church for the first time, and it began to dawn on me what it meant to be a pastor where I couldn't have any Bible studies, and we couldn't meet together for worship, and I couldn't go to your house and visit you. I mean, what's a pastor supposed to do anyway when he can't go to church or he can't visit his folks? It's a little silly. I told you then that I felt like I was playing ping pong with both arms tied behind my back. 
But you know what I realized in time as I continued to trust in the Lord in that fire? I realized I was unbound. I realized that just because of all the restrictions of the coronavirus, that didn't stop God one bit from working powerfully through you and through me. He just found different ways to do it. We were just in unfamiliar ground, but the Lord works. And no matter how limited you are, you could be on a ventilator, you could uh, be stuck at home, you could uh, have a handicap, you, you could uh, have some problem that uh, just seems to overwhelm you. You don't even want to go out. Don't worry. You can still serve the Lord in that, and he can make you a blessing, and he will do it. I've watched you be a part of that in the last couple of months. I've watched you be the church more than you ever have been before since I've seen you a year ago. You have gone out and you called folks and you brought groceries and your hearts have gone out to people in prayer and you've gotten right with the Lord and the same thing's been happening to me. The funny thing about the fires of this world, when the Lord's walking through with us, we are unbound. We're not tied up at all spiritually by that. It says that the four men were unbound. They were walking in the midst of the fire, in verse 25, and they are not hurt. Well, I thought I just said that in the, in the flames of trial, sometimes we get hurt. Yeah, we get hurt the way this world can hurt us. But this world cannot hurt what Jesus gives you. This world cannot hurt what Jesus gives you gives you. I think of a, a man that I watched die of Alzheimer's. Over the course of three years, I watched him start off still able to talk to me and know me by name, and eventually he not only forgot who I was, but he couldn't call his own children that loved him and took care of them by their names. Eventually he didn't know who they were. Eventually, he forgot how to swallow. And eventually, the night came where he was in a hospital room and could do nothing but lay there in a vegetable state, waiting to die. You might think, well, this world hurt that man. Well, then a miracle happened. I don't see a lot of miracles that I just want to call miracles. But a doctor might say this happens sometimes, but for me, it was a miracle. The night that man died. His family was there in the room, and he opened his eyes, and he looked around, and he called each child over to his bed by name, and thanked them for taking care of him. Thank them for all that they had done. Then he said, could we say a prayer? And they all held hands, and he led in prayer, the most beautiful prayer you've ever heard. And when he said, Amen, in the name of Jesus, he closed his eyes and never woke up again. This world, this life, took away his body. But for that instant, we saw that there was a reality in him shared with the Lord that no one could ever take away. This life, viruses around us, uh, the political situation, your income, your health, none of that can take away the eternal life of Jesus Christ that waits for all who call on him. Nothing in this life can hurt what Jesus gives you. You don't have to be afraid anymore. Fear not them that can kill the body but fear him who can destroy both body and soul in hell. But in Jesus, we don't have to worry about hell. Amen? Amen. We are his and cannot be hurt. And we will be living forever and ever in his presence. Father God, I pray that we would stop thinking about this furnace we're in as something that limits us something that we have to wait for before we start ministry again. 
Lord, we're unbound. I pray we'll realize that. Lord, I pray that we would stop being so afraid of what this world can do when it can't take away a thing that you have given us. And Lord, I thank you more than anything else that you say to me and to each person here, Behold, I am with you always, even to the end of the age, even to the end of the world, even in the furnace. Lord, I pray that if there's someone here who is not sure about knowing you, not sure where they stand with you, I pray that they would call me up, find me, find a Christian friend, call out to you right now, our Father in heaven, please forgive me in Jesus. I don't understand my life, or I don't understand you, but I trust you right now. Give me the gift of forgiveness in your eternal life. And all God's people say, Amen. Come on up and sing for us. Sound check on Wednesday. Tuesday. He said I need to do three songs. I said we can sit and play all day if you want, but uh, he said, well, when you get ready to finish, just bring it. And I thought about that. And I said, you know what? We'll bring it. This man did drove two hours this morning from North Stafford to Brown Garrisonville to come down and play for y'all. So I appreciate it riding. Brenda, thank you for coming. Thank you for bringing it. This is uh, Terry Boulevard from Stafford County. Well, let's all go down to the river. That man walking on the water. Come on to me. What I want to see is a man walking on the water. He can raise a day from the grave. Take water.
on us all the blessing not that I can give, but that Jesus Christ gives all who call on him. Lord, may your spirit fill us and guide us as we go into our ministry field. All God's people said, Amen.